It was a week of many storms here at Old Stonewall Farm, the first leaving behind snow. And as I walked along the path, I followed in the footsteps of a hiker that went before me. And as I did, I was reminded how God does make a way for us, clears the path, and makes our path easier. As the icicles melted off the old 18th century bird bottle, I did my best to salvage what I could of the Christmas wreath. I pulled out the boxwood and I made little arrangements to decorate my house all throughout the barren month of January, filling it with life and with hope. Boxwood was a favorite greenery in colonial times to decorate with as it symbolized eternal life. But then the heavy rains and the high winds came, and the house shook violently. The next day I assessed the damage, and the bird bottle did not make it. It wasn't the only casualty. Many old trees also did not make it on the trail. This one that greeted me every day as I took my run toppled over. It was a grand old tree, there for hundreds of years. Some people would call it a witness tree. We wonder what they have witnessed, what stories they could tell. But now, the stories were no more. I worried about all the other trees that might topple over, all the stories that might be cut short. And as the power went out, I did my best to keep Fritz and myself warm. But most of all, I did my best to try to remain calm in the storm. This is an episode where I might be calling it the one in which I lost all my subscribers. Many of you have subscribed and discovered Old Stonewall Farm during Christmas when everything was just so magical, the snow, the candlelight, and it was such a joy to share with you a country Christmas here in Vermont in my 18th century home in which I call Old Stonewall Farm because there is indeed an old stone well. But it's January and I want to share with you the reality of Old Stonewall Farm. It is far from perfect and far from easy. Now I'm coming to you in a very cold house. We have lost power and uh, no heat. The people who had the house before, I don't know what they did to it. And my husband and I, over the years, we have explored ways in which to get at least a wood stove or a working fireplace so that when we do lose uh, power, we would still be able to warm the house. We haven't been able to do that yet. And it's because the house is just laid out in a strange way in which there's no real wall or uh, place where we can add an addition because of either the well or the septic. And so we're kind of pigeonholed into what we have. So I'm coming to you on this day in which I'm not looking my best. I haven't been able to shower. I haven't been feeling 100%. And to make it worse, it is a violent wind storm. I live in a valley, and so the winds are even more exasperated. Two nights ago, when we had the first wind storm, the upstairs was actually shaking, and the bed was actually shaking. It happened again last night, so I'm also coming to you with no sleep at all. This morning, when I came down, the window was blown in, and it's just... A complete mess out there. This is the second big storm in which my husband isn't home. He has to work and I just find it very unsettling when he is out in this and I have no way of knowing if he's okay. I don't have a phone, uh, no phone service, and it's just a horrible feeling not knowing 
if your loved one is safe and no way to communicate. And when I find myself in situations like this, I think back to my love for the 18th century when there weren't any uh, cell phones, when you didn't text people, when you didn't know where somebody was constantly. What did we do back then when we weren't in constant contact with somebody, when we had to sit and trust that they were okay? This is the second storm. And I found myself really rattled by it to the point where it bothered me and I had to ask myself, where's my faith? During the first storm, when I woke up the next day, I went to go for my walk like I usually do on the trail. And there was a grand old tree that always greeted me on my walk. And the tree fell down. It was at least 20 feet tall. It was a beautiful, majestic old tree. I loved that tree. It was sort of a beacon like, saying hello to me in the morning. To see it toppled over really broke my heart. And I looked at torn up roots and I realized that the ground was so saturated that the heavy winds just knocked over the tree. The roots were compromised and it couldn't withstand the gale force winds. Well, when I looked at those roots and I saw the saturated ground, it made me stop and ask myself, how is the soil that I'm planted in? Is it saturated to the point where when the storms come in life, I will find myself knocked over? Or are my roots deeply embedded in trust in God so that when the storms come, I can withstand whatever, whatever might be? So every day when I went for a walk and I looked at that tree, I paused. I had to ask myself, how's my faith? Everything seems to be going wrong. Everything just looks blah, gray and not pretty. And I'm just feeling overwhelmed. How do I get those, those roots of trust in God healthier? How do I get them more entrenched in God's love so that I will be able to handle the things that life brings us. There are always storms in this life, always. Before I got up, I just wrapped myself into the blankets and the dog jumped on me. And luckily this dog is not afraid of high wind. My first Bernese mountain dog, Sophie, she was scared to death of any storm. And so she would be panting and just crazy all throughout the storm. Fritz is fine. He was sound asleep next to me and he was snoring. So that was a comfort. I curled deeper into the blankets and I felt my heart racing as I listened to the wind howl and the bed shake. And I wondered what damage was out there. And my husband was out in it driving a truck. I found my, my imagination just going wild, like with all the what ifs. And that's when I remembered a piece of scripture. The disciples were in a boat with Jesus and a big storm came up and the waves were threatening to overtopple the boat. And where was Jesus? He was sound asleep. Nothing was bothering him at all. He wasn't scared about the big waves. He wasn't frightened that the boat was going to overturn. His friends were wondering, why are you so calm? They woke him up and Jesus, he just looks at the waves, the angry, powerful, destructive waves. And he looks out at them and he says, peace, be still. The waves calmed. I've turned to that scripture many times in my life and it always provided me some, some comfort. A reminder that yes, there are storms in this life. High winds will come and knock out power, will knock down beautiful old trees, will, will cause destruction but we are held safe and secure. And that's when I remembered to do a breath prayer. I learned about breath prayer a few years ago when I was editor of a magazine and we had a column called Spiritual Practices and a minister wrote about a technique called breath prayer in which you think of a phrase or a piece of scripture and in one breath, you say one part of that that phrase, and in another breath, when you release it, you say the rest of the prayer. 
in my time of being very scared with the howling winds and just nerves overtaking me, I breathed in peace and I held it for a second or two, peace. And then when I exhaled, I said, be still. And I thought about Jesus looking at the angry waves and with just a word from his mouth, everything settled down. This is life. But if I think back just to a few weeks ago, when I was bringing you those beautiful Christmas videos, the message in them, beyond the beauty, Christ was born to stand by our sides when that storm is threatening to overtake us. Christ was born to enter into reality. This is my reality here at Old Stonewall Farm. And I better check on Fritz who finally went outside, even though the winds are very high. I'm really nervous. I have to go get him. But I'm glad he went outside because he refused to go outside the this morning. And I pray that my husband comes home safely. But when I feel myself starting to worry, I will breathe in peace and I will exhale, be still. I invite you to try that technique of breath prayer Use whatever phrase is special to you or you find comforting. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be scripture. It could be any phrase at all. Just find those words that bring you peace, that bring you hope, that give you the strength to carry on. If you enjoyed this time together at Old Stonewall Farm, then if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. That will make me feel better to realize I haven't lost anybody by being truthful and showing the real me. Please subscribe and pass it along to others because you truly are a blessing to me. And I love coming to you here at Old Well Farm. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I love sharing with you that throughout it all, God is good all the time. All right, I hope the power goes on soon because I definitely want to wash my hair. <laughs>